Hi guys, Ryan here, and today we will be talking about onset audio acquisition, where I'll be going into a little bit more detail on exactly how we captured the audio for our very own My Road Reel entry titled The Mascot. Audio acquisition is one of the most important aspects of filmmaking and will largely determine how much dialogue replacement and foley is required in the audio post-processing stages of your production. The goal is always to capture the best possible onset audio in any situation so that you have plenty to work with throughout the production process. While we have access to an extensive range of gear here at Rode, we used a fairly minimal setup for the mascot with just a couple of mics, an external recorder, and the new RodeLink Filmmaker Wireless Kit for onset acquisition. We also use the iXY into an iPhone 6 for Foley audio capture. Now for dialogue capture in the mascot, we primarily use the Rode lavalier microphone into the Filmmaker Wireless Kit for a number of reasons. Firstly, our talent, M1 Man, had to be quite mobile and free to move around, so a tethered connection wasn't ideal for most of the shots. Secondly, many of our shots were quite wide, which meant that both our on-camera mics and our boom mic were much too distant from the action to pick up nice, clean dialogue free from any background noise. It was important that we kept the lav hidden throughout the shoot, and the design of the M1 Man suit actually enabled us to mount the mic in the perfect position for dialogue capture, just to the side of the face opening. By keeping the lav mic in the ideal fixed position, free from any clothing rustle or noise, we were able to ensure that dialogue was crystal clear throughout the entire shoot, since the actor's mouth was always in relatively the same position on the suit. The wireless bell pack was mounted on the inside of the suit to ensure that it stayed out of shot. While much of the dialogue capture was done using the lavalier microphone, many of the shots required multiple actors on screen, and since these shots had a slightly tighter frame, we were able to use a single boom mic, the NTG4 Plus, to capture onset audio, mounted in a blimp windshield, and boomed either just above or just below the frame line. Check out our episode on booming tips for more info on the best practices with a microphone mounted on a boom pole. There were a number of shots that required some additional Foley sound to help tell the story and make the audio a little bit more immersive for the viewer. So for those, we ensured that we had an IXY on set to pick up any of the key elements like doors opening and closing, taps running, and even the action shots where we had to get a little more creative in our choice of source material for sound effects. Now don't forget, the most important part of miking any set is correct microphone selection and placement in order to make sure that you're maximizing the potential of your gear. A little time spent on correct microphone placement will save a lot of time in post-production. Once you've marked your talent on set, you'll need to set up your gain levels on your camera and audio recorder. You'll want to make sure that your audio does not overload the input of your recording device. So in general, I like to make sure that the loudest signals peak at no higher than minus six decibels on my level meters. Most external audio recorders have a limiter function on each input, which will act as further protection from the loud audio spikes that might otherwise overload the input and completely ruin your audio, so I would highly recommend using a limiter on set. For this shoot, we were using a dual system audio setup, meaning that we recorded audio both on camera for reference and off camera for the main production audio. The benefit to recording dual system audio is that you can have your sound guy completely concentrating on sound, and you won't have them tethered to your camera, leaving them free to move around the set during any given take. Now it is important to capture good reference audio on camera to make it easy to synchronize later on. So we used the VideoMic Pro on each camera during the M1 Man shoot to make sure that we had nice clean on camera audio to work with. And my last tip when recording dual system audio is to use a clapper board just like this one at the start of every take. Now clapping the signal creates a distinct audio spike on all channels on a set, including the camera tracks, making it easy to line up each individual track in post and saving you a bunch of time in the editing process. If you don't have a clapper board, simply have your talent clap their hands once or twice at the start of each tape. You can automatically sync your footage and audio tracks with software such as Pluralize from our Mara Road Reel partner Red Giant, saving you tons of time during the editing process. Keep an eye out for the next audio episode where we'll be talking audio post-production to help you bring your audio to the next level.